joining us, someone who testified at the hearing on the Equality Act, president of the Human Rights Campaign, Alfonso David. Thank you very much for being on the show this morning. Uh, tell our viewers uh, not only what you said uh, during the hearing, but what you, what you hope Americans will understand about this act. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mika, for having me again. Uh, yesterday, for the first time in our history, the United States Senate considered the Equality Act and heard stories of discrimination and violence against LGBTQ people across this country. They heard from me. They also heard from Stella Keating, who is a transgender teenager from Washington State, who shared her story about wanting to go to a college and feel valued no matter what state her college is in. We also heard from Dr. Edith Guffey, who's a minister from Kansas. And she talked about simply trying to ensure that her LGBTQ child is protected under law. For far too long, Mika, LGBTQ people have been denied the same basic civil rights protections that are enjoyed by our fellow Americans. And people in this country are united behind the idea that LGBTQ people deserve protections, more than 70% support the Equality Act, according to a poll released by the Human Rights Campaign yesterday. And in fact, 94 percent of Democrats, 85 percent of independents, and 68 percent of Republicans support the Equality Act. These protections are supported by a majority of adults in all 50 states and by solid majorities across all age groups. So this legislation, the Equality Act, it's, it's time has come. We need to make sure that LGBTQ people are protected in all facets of life. And that's what we talked about yesterday, and that's what we are advancing in the Senate. You mentioned one of the speakers at yesterday's hearing, 16-year-old Stella Keating, and here's some of her speech, questioning why her rights as a transgender woman can be taken away so easily. Right now, I live in a state with where I have equal protection under the law. And as a high school sophomore, I'm starting to look at colleges. And all I can think about is this, less than half of the states in our country provide equal protection for me under the law. What happens if I want to attend a college in a state that doesn't protect me? Right now, I could be denied medical care or be evicted for simply being transgender in many states. How's that even right? How's that even American? What if I'm offered a dream job in a state where I can be discriminated against? Even if my employer is supportive, I still have to live somewhere. I have to eat in restaurants and I have to have a doctor. And why am I having to worry about all this at the age of 16? This is the United States of America, the country that I love. Every young person, every person, regardless of who they are or who they love, should be able to be excited about their future. So, so, Alfonso, can you explain to me uh, how this legislation uh, is different than what the Supreme Court ruled on last year? 6-3 ruling. A lot of people paid close attention to the fact that Neil Gorsuch and John Roberts both uh, said that if you di dis discriminate uh, based on sexual orientation, that is a violation of an American civil rights. Um, how, how is this legislation different than that ruling? Joe, that's a great question. I mean, the, 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 the Supreme Court held that LGBTQ people are protected under federal civil rights laws. So we're talking about employment, housing, and credit. But the Supreme Court could not opine on federal law that doesn't exist. So LGBTQ people are not currently protected under public accommodations. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.